Okay, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Jim Levinson. I'm the Dean of the Jackson School of Global Affairs here at Yale. Uh, I'm joined by three of our fellow students. Uh, let me start off by saying just a little bit about the Jackson School, and then we're going to sort of turn it over to the people you actually want to hear from. Uh, Jackson School of Global Affairs is, is a fairly new school at Yale. Uh, we officially opened our doors only about a year ago, although we've been on campus as a degree granting institute for closer to 13 years. Um, I'm obviously not unbiased, but I think it's the best school of international affairs in the country. Actually, I'd, I'd say in the world. Um, I think we do things a little bit differently than many of our peers. One of the privileges of being able to start a new school at a university like Yale, at a 300 year old, 300 plus year old university, is we didn't inherit last year's way of doing things. We're able to create the school that we really want to create. Some of the things that differentiate the Jackson School from some of our peers on the public policy, international affairs side, uh, we're very tightly integrated with the other professional schools here at Yale, uh, witness this, uh, this event. Uh, many of our students do dual degrees, and I'd say virtually every one of our students at Jackson takes courses at Yale's other professional schools. Um, School of Management, uh, and, as well as Yale you know, Law School for students so interested, School of the Environment, and some students also take courses at the School of Public Health. Uh, some of the other things that differentiate the Jackson uh, School, in addition to our integration with uh, the rest of the university, um, I'd say the integration of practitioners uh, into the curriculum. We're fortunate to have world-class academics. Um, but in addition to that, uh, we have people who have actually been in the world making policy uh, in our classrooms. These are our Jackson Senior Fellows. To a person, the Senior Fellows teach seminars. Um, lots of uh, wonderful schools of international affairs and public policy have great people who come in, they give a talk at four and they're on the Acela by 6.30. Um, our, our senior fellows, uh, they're in the classroom. So if you take a course with them, uh, you have them you know, in, in a small seminar every week for the course of a semester. Uh, the school is small relative to our peers. Uh, an incoming cohort at the Jackson School uh, next year will probably be between 35 and 40 students. Of those 35 to 40, probably about half by construction are from outside of the United States. Um, and it's a really, really interesting group. Um, much like students at the School of Management, uh, all of our students uh, are expected to have some sort of significant uh, work experience before they get here. Uh, I think the median age of incoming students here at Jackson is probably somewhere around 28. Uh, although of course some students are uh, are younger and and half of them by construction are older, um, so small small cohort um, integration with the rest of the university integration of the senior fellows these are some of the things that differentiate the school. Uh, over the course of the conversation here, we'll say a little bit also about um, financial support. Um, let me sort of just put that out there and we can talk more about it later. Uh, but the Jackson School provides tuition waivers for every student who is admitted who asks for it. Um, so we effectively don't charge tuition. Okay, um, that's all by way of background. Um, what I wanna do now is introduce three students who are joint between Jackson and SOM. Um, to each of you, uh, Kishan, Emmanuel, and Lakshmi, maybe you could uh, sort of let us know, you know, uh, where are you from, uh, focus of your studies here at Yale, and what did you do prior to coming to Jackson and SOM? Uh, so I'm going to hand it off. Why don't we go Lakshmi, then uh, Emmanuel, then Kishan? Um, thanks, Jim. Um, hi, everyone. Um, really nice to be here. 
Um, my name is Lakshmi Venkatraman and I'm from India. Um, I grew up in Bangalore. Um, and I, prior to Yale, I, I, I did my undergrad in law and, and that's really where I got interested in factory farming, animal agriculture and animal rights more broadly. And um, so what I was doing prior to Yale was that I was working at nonprofits uh, that were doing different kinds of animal agriculture related activist advocacy in India. So I was working with the government to create a, um, a favorable policy ecosystem for cage-free and plant-based foods in India. I was also working with different kinds of food businesses, um, CPG, retail, startups, um, to promote cage-free and plant-based foods in India. Also worked with farmers to create trade associations around uh, cage-free and plant-based foods. And um, that continues to be my focus here at uh, Yale through both uh, the Jackson degree as well as the SOM degree. I'm trying to understand um, how the public and the private sector approaches to sustainable food um, can and can work together better to advance this movement. Hi, everybody. Uh, great to be here. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Richard. I'm originally from Switzerland, but I already came to the States to do my undergrad studying econ at Harvard. So I kind of know both sides a little bit, um, but went back to Europe after and worked as a counselor for trade and agriculture policy at the OECD for a couple of years before coming to Yale. Um, working in trade policy during the uh, the trade wars was very exciting, but uh, I initially came to graduate school to shift my academic and professional focus towards issues of sustainability and especially clean energy transition, uh, for which Yale is obviously a fantastic place, especially because of this integration that you mentioned uh, with other schools that also focus on these topics and got particularly interested in uh, the financial side of this. Uh, so I've been studying clean energy finance really for the last two years. And I think that's also what motivated the uh, the joint degree with with SOM, which is, of course, very complementary in this field. Hi, everyone. I'm Kishan Chunker. I'm originally from Frederick, Maryland. I studied quantitative economics at the U.S. Naval Academy and then spent six years on active duty with the Navy deployed around the world, um, really thought it tied into the global affairs focus of Jackson. Um, but after I got out of the military, I also spent some time working in finance before I started uh, my first year at the uh, MPP last year. Um, and I was really interested in really learning more about how I could use finance to create that positive um, economic and social impact. So um, I thought there's a lot of tie-ins and relevance to being able to leverage both the private and public sector in making a difference. Um, so I decided I want to start the MBA as well. Um, so I actually applied to the MBA um, during my first year at Jackson. Um, and see. Yeah, that's a, a great lead in to my saying just a few things about the joint degree program. Um, many students uh, apply to the joint degree or apply, you know, as planning to do the joint degree program uh, from the outset. Um, admissions at Jackson and at SOM are independent, um, but uh, students who do the joint degree program essentially take a year off of what would be four years for a, you know, the MBA is a two-year program. Jackson's MPP is a two-year program. Students doing the joint get both degrees in three years, not four. Um, so they, they spend basically uh, a year and a half at each place. Um, in practice, and the students can weigh in on this, the, the most students do the, the core, there's a core year, first year at the, in the MBA program, and the first year at Jackson, and then the third year is really a mix of, of um, a, across the two, depending on, on what one's interests might be. Um, that's, that's sort of the structure uh, of the program. What I really want to do is though is hear, you know, hear from the students um, in each of the panelists. Let me just sort of put it out there. Uh, sort of, you know, why did you choose the joint degree program? Um, if you've already done a summer internship, um, you know, where did you do that? Sort of uh, relatedly, what are your career goals after graduation? Um, and maybe you could talk a little bit about career resources that you've found useful. And why don't we do it in reverse order this time? So Kishan, Emmanuel, then Lakshmi. Sure. 
Um, I guess I'll start with the first question of why I chose to do the joint degree. Um, to me, it was really important, especially wanting to work in um, kind of an impactful field, being able to speak both languages and understand how policy and the private sector work, being able to translate that difference um, was really important to me. And I wanted to understand more about the underlying economics of development, um, underlying economics of issues in healthcare, sustainability. Um, that was really exciting to me, especially with my undergrad degree um, and understanding the motivations behind government policy and how that's gonna impact investments in the future. I think the very first class that I took at Jackson kind of encapsulated what I wanted to do. It was called Catalyzing Private Sector Investment in it was Sub-Saharan Africa, but it was largely what I was interested in uh, more broadly. Um, and I think the joint degree kind of facilitated both aspects of that. Um, and one of the things that I thought was really unique about the joint degree program here specifically was um, kind of, as Jim mentioned, was that collaborative culture within the classroom where you know, I've talked to people that had joint degree programs in other schools, and they they would tell me how they've literally never seen some of those other schools or been in classes with the other um, program. Um, and it's very siloed. But here, I think my first semester, I took a social entrepreneurship class. And it was me from the public policy school, people from the business school, people in the theater school. And all of the classes are very integrated like that. And I think that was really important to me as well. Um, On to the question about the summer internship that you asked. Um, so this summer... I worked at the Abishkar Group, um, which is a, uh, it technically has three uh, three verticals of the investment bank, venture capital, and policy advocacy. Um, and it was a really exciting opportunity because I found that opportunity through a class I took last semester called Sustainable Transitions in India. Actually, Manuel was uh, in the class with me, um, but we had consulted kind of through the course um, over the semester and we made a trip to India over spring break and I really loved the work I was doing and I saw a lot of overlap again between you know policy advocacy as well as impact and uh, the investment side um, so I asked the, I asked the organization as well as my professors if uh, I could come back over the summer and it was a really exciting opportunity um, and for career goals after graduation I think um, what I'm interested in right now, I'm uh, recruiting for investment banking um, within either healthcare or uh, renewable energy focus right now. But I'm hoping in the long term to kind of pivot into a impact VC role. Um, and I hope the economic policy side can kind of speak to the, the changes I want to see. Was that all the questions? I think so. <laughs> I think so. Emmanuel. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Um, I've already sort of touched on this a little bit in terms of, you know, my goals for coming to, to Yale and, and especially doing the joint degree uh, in terms of really sort of going through with this career switch um, that also sort of took shape during my first year at Jackson, um, learning more about clean energy finance, seeing uh, kind of what else I needed to know, what else I needed to learn to actually break into the field and, and, and make a difference there. Um, so, yeah, that's what kind of got me to to consider the MBA in the first place and to to do it eventually. Um, I think almost sort of to some extent a necessity. Um, I was in conversation with people at multilateral development banks, which is sort of like goes to the long term career goals uh, where I'd love to work. And many people were very clear what you need is uh, MBA credentials and some experience in, in finance, um, which was, you know, somewhat disappointing initially. Uh, but I think being at Yale, it was easy to to actually get that experience. So uh, I did two summer internships in finance so far. Um, one was at the Connecticut Green Bank, which is a semi-public uh, lender towards renewable energy projects here in Connecticut uh, that's funded by the, the state legislature. Um, and La this summer I was in Morgan Stanley's Renewable Power Group um, and really enjoyed those experiences. And I think uh, it sort of speaks to to the to the ability to access these pathways, right? Um, you mentioned career resources, uh, especially when trying to access recruitment pathways. Uh, Kitchen mentioned banking recruiting. Uh, those are quite restricted in terms of how you can apply, how you even get considered. Um, and SM really offered great resources there, uh, very complimentary to sort of the experience at Jackson, uh, but having a dedicated student club that 
basically helps with preparation that tells you the information that you need to even break in and helps you navigate that that process uh so the, the student club at, at sm was was hugely hugely helpful um but i guess initially also sort of for somebody coming from the public sector and wanting to go back into the public sector eventually and hopefully working at a multilateral bank uh the cohort at jackson has been super helpful in sort of knowing what is necessary what is needed um getting initial contacts um people at jackson really come from all uh all walks of life all sorts of career backgrounds including from exactly those uh kind of multilateral banks and um it was helpful to to be able to talk to people and get a sense of what i needed to take next steps um i can go next uh so yeah um i think for me the joint degree was becoming more and more evident as the right choice because um like i mentioned i'm interested in the sustainable foods industry and my background was in advocacy and i used to work with activist groups um and i had worked with food businesses but i'd never worked at a food business and it was becoming increasingly clear that if i had to play the bridge role that i was looking to play be between uh you know policy makers and businesses it would also be good to have a um business experience and that's really why I applied to the MBA um, to, to signal that I would be able to then work in the food industry for a while um, before going on to a bridge role eventually. So that's the reason I applied. Uh, I also applied once I got to Jackson um, in round one last year. Um, and then this summer, I was with the uh, venture capital arm of a food and agriculture company called uh, Archer Daniels Midland or ADM in Chicago. Uh, and I was specifically focused on alternative protein startup investments uh, within uh, within that division. I also worked a little bit on health and wellness startups and uh, animal nutrition startups, but the focus was alternative protein. Um, I really enjoyed the internship just because I got a, it was a really nice window into the US um, VC and startup ecosystem in food, but also to see what, you know, a company the size of ADM thinks about how it thinks about sustainability in food was also exciting for me. Um, and um, in terms of future career interests, uh, I'm interested in the US alternative food, alternative protein industry and um I'm still exploring what kinds of functions I would be interested in within that. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm still exploring that uh, for my next internship. Um, in terms of career resources, I think both the career offices in both Jackson and SOM have been extremely helpful in different ways. Um, I think um, the Jackson Career Office put me in touch with a whole host of food and agriculture specialists uh, from alumni uh, you know, from Jackson's alumni database that I perhaps wouldn't have been able to reach on my own. And um, SOM, um, like Emmanuel mentioned, has really wonderful clubs. Um, I'm part of the Food, Agribusiness and Beverage Club this year, and it's it has incredible programming, professional, social and academic programming around the food industry, which has been super helpful. Uh, one other career pathway that is has been more indirect indirect for me was uh, the Mint competition, which is the MBA Impact Investing Network and Training competition, which is a practical hands-on impact investing training for students um, with good ties to the industry. And um, I did that last year on the team I was on with the food and agriculture team and we just happened to choose an alternative protein startup so that whole experience of learning impact investing in the specific sector i was interested in actually got me very close to getting my internship through that process so that was also another additional pathway great so questions are kind of coming in uh from uh from the audience uh here's the first one um someone asks might the students be able to talk a little bit about the student life experience across the two programs? You know, sort of how do you stay connected to the Jackson community while you're at SOM and vice versa? Um, I don't know who wants to, to run with that one. I so, I'm happy to ahead, have Sean. a crack at it. Um, oh, sorry. No, uh, go. I'm uh, sorry. Go ahead. 
Uh, I was just going to say, uh, one of the unique things that I actually really like about Jackson is the fact that the, the cohort is so small. And I guess I was going from the small cohort to a bigger one um, with SOM. So, you know, there's 30 people that you know, and they become your family pretty quickly. And so, um, you know, when you when you're in the middle of recruiting right now, at least for me, and there's uh, a pretty big class size, there's still like once a week or something, I would get together with, you know, some of the people that I knew from Jackson last year. And even yesterday, I think I had to like a lunch and a coffee um, yesterday morning. And so I think it is, uh, it is something really nice to have like a very small, like family outside of SOM that you can kind of decompress with and, you know, that you get to hang out with on the side. So that's how it's kind of played in for me. Anybody else want to add on, or we could move on to to the next question? Just just because I hear them right now, um, I've been living with people at Jack who are also at Jackson uh, for the last two and a half years now, um, and I think that's in itself is an amazing way, obviously, to to stay in touch. And I think that's actually the case for a lot of people, right? You find roommates in your the program that you start at. Um, because you sort of like do one year in one school and then the second year in another school. Um, and during that second year, when you're sort of like building up a whole new friend network, um, you probably most probably still live with the people you started off with at your other school. And um, it's sort of a very natural way to stay connected. And even now as a third year, you know, with my initial cohort leaving, I still feel very much connected um, through my roommates. I also stay with my Jackson um flatmate from last year so that's been a really nice connection to Jackson even though I feel fully immersed um, at SOM this year. Cool. Um, someone else asks could you share uh, perhaps one class or experience that has really stood out uh, stood out to you during your time at Yale? So um, that's one I think each of you, it doesn't need, need to be a really long answer, but I, I, each, it'd be great if each of you might, uh, might answer that one. Um, Lakshmi, you've got your mute turned off. Why don't you, why don't you go first, then Emmanuel, and then uh, Kishan will wrap up. Um, I think my history class last year from uh, Jackson has really almost changed the way I think. Um, I think just re the opportunity to study the history of the multilaterals and so many other institutions um, that we want to work at and that we, uh, you know, speak about every day. Um, I, th I think the opportunity to go deep into the history of these institutions was really something I had not had previously. And um, the fact that it was a semester long courses with absolutely stunning um, <laughs> course material, um, it, it I think has had a very deep impact on me. Uh, yeah, with a, a not to practicality, um, there's a Yale course called Renewable Energy Project Finance. Um, obviously, I, I, I'm sorry to keep coming back to the whole like clean energy finance thing, uh, but that's really what I've been focusing on. And it's honestly, it's been uh, fantastic, not just in terms of the content, but also just the skill building and the immediate uh, ways you can apply it to um, to many career paths uh, that have any kind of connection to to finance. Um, but yeah, maybe also on the 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 more sort of like broader inspiring uh, front, I've had uh, my first year a fantastic course on a Jackson seminar on uh, governing the global economy, looking at all the different international institutions that govern uh, the global international political economy, and it was really a fantastic way to connect with all the other Jackson students and people, some people from SOM, some people from other Yale programs. Who uh, who have an economics background and think about these topics on a regular basis, and so it was sort of testament to the kind of conversations that you can have with uh, with the fellow students. And I guess uh, I'll finish up with uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and there's a couple courses. Um, the first one was a social entrepreneurship class with Professor Shaheed, and it was a lab where you're essentially creating your own entrepreneurship. Um, venture that is supposed to address a social problem and you start from the very beginning and work all the way through the multiple phases of you know starting a business what that's really like and how you use that to address a, a company and i thought that was like the most hands-on and tangible way to learn um, about entrepreneurship which i had no experience with um, and then the two the two other classes i'll kind of join together um, at jackson that i took last year was the catalyzing private sector investment um, class and the professor for that was um, 
one of the CEOs for City, um, she's Joyce Ann, um, incredible. And just the, the access and the um, network that she was able to bring into our classroom. Like every day we had a different CEO of like M-Pesa and I mean, some of these huge businesses and some of these um, like cutting edge uh, companies in Africa. And so they were speaking to us every day. And so that was such an exciting opportunity. And when I was looking at internships, I was able to talk to her about, oh, do you know anyone in the VC space? And she's like, oh, well, you can talk to this person or I'm starting my own VC. <laughs> um, and then the other one was the sustainable energy transitions in India class with Professor Seddon last year it was an incredible opportunity to go to India. And she's so, again, well connected. And we literally had dinner with the uh, former CEO of Infosys. Um, and he was just hanging out with us and she knew him and they're good friends and like being able to talk to them and understand their um, perspective on like a very like tangible one-on-one -on -one basis is really unique, um, especially in such a small class size. It's not like the senior fellows are just there for a couple hours, like uh, Professor Levinson said, they're, they're there to hang out with you and really help you understand the concepts. Yeah. Um, and I'll just add on the, the person that, uh, Folks are referring to as Jessica Sedan, who is a senior fellow um, doing courses mostly in the climate space and is putting together actually a year long program um, for students, joint degree, as well as uh, Jackson students who are interested in climate policy. The new program that we're rolling out is kind of interesting. Let me just say a, a bit about it. Um, it's gonna have an entire semester basically with the science that is that folks who work in this field are going to need to know and you know the idea isn't to train scientists but it's to train people who are going to be able to understand the more technical side of stuff um, and then the second semester is more focused on on the policy side uh, and, and Jessica is uh, hopefully going to be with us for for quite some time okay next question um, and some of you have talked, have hit on this a little bit, you know, can you talk about the career resources that you've found most helpful at Jackson and SOM? Some of you have already mentioned that, although you don't think of faculty as a career resource, in fact, they, they turn out that way, especially some of our senior fellows. Um, but maybe you could say a little bit about the, the formal resources that are available also. Uh, who wants to grab that one? I think just, Somebody's got to raise their hand here. So, yeah, go sure, for happy it. To, uh, happy to attempt an answer. Um, you know, I think you, part of the difficulty of answering the question is because there's lots of resources out there, right? And um, I think for everybody, it's usually a different combination that works well. Um, and let me try to give a couple of examples. So for instance, at, at Jackson, it's a fairly small, the whole school is small, right? So it's a small career office. So you get very personalized attention right like the career advisors know you and when you walk around the building and you run into them um they will ask you like how's it going um especially your first year you know you get here you're wide-eyed you look at lots of lots of different things um uh, but they kind of take you to task and keep you honest and ask you know have you reached out to people do you have a clear plan uh what's your the resume look like um so you kind of get a little more of that personalized attention, whereas at SOM, I think you have a much larger career development office that also fosters direct contacts with potential employers um, because they're also like maybe more slightly more targeted or in a, in a, in a smaller subset of fields. Um, so you, you get a lot of that attention. And I think especially at SOM, we, a couple of us have mentioned it, it's really the student clubs that do a lot of the so the heavy lifting for career um, career development just by virtue of giving you the technical training that you need for certain industries, whether it's the energy club, the finance club, the consulting club, but also um, running um, kind of social events and just kind of connecting people, connecting these networks. Um, and sometimes you almost get connected, we even get connected to these networks at other schools. So for instance, for me, I took a lot of classes at the School of Environment um, and I'm in some of the, the groups there uh, where I'm even today going to the uh, Yale Clean Energy Conference. Um, and you kind of, you really branch out and this, this integration that Jim mentioned, this really happens uh, on all levels, right? On an administrative level, on an academic level, but even on a career level, I would say. 
So here's a question that maybe all of you want to take a crack at. Um, how all of you are, are doing the joint degree and what are you getting from the jointness of this, from doing the joint degree that you wouldn't get if you were just in, and you can fill in the blank here, if you were just in SOM, sort of what, I mean, I am an economist too. I'm going to sound like an economist for a second. You know, sort of what's the marginal benefit if you're at SOM of also doing Jackson? Or if you're at Jackson, what's the marginal benefit um, of also doing the SOM degree? And, and that's kind of a generic question. And, and maybe each of you could take a, a crack at that. Um, Lakshmi, then Kishan, then Emmanuel. Um, yeah. Uh, a friend, another joint friend recently was saying she's the most businessy amongst all her policy friends and the most policy-ish amongst her business friends. And I think that's a that's been a way to put it for me to also think about this. Um, I think also going back to Kishan's point about being able to speak the language and know the frameworks of each of these different worlds that are so interconnected, but also tend to work in silos many times. Um, I think learning both those languages and worldviews and approaches to doing the same question, which in my case is sustainable food, uh, has been incredibly valuable. And also, I think like I've already seen the fruits of that in some sense at my internship, where which was obviously a private sector internship, but the company is always working with regulators, always working with policymakers. Uh, the uh, the lens of public policy is always important in business and vice versa. So um, I think I'm already seeing the what I had anticipated would be the fruits of the joint degree. Yeah, I think I would definitely agree with what you're saying. The on both sides, like nothing happens in a vacuum. If you're in the policy side and you want to make an impact, um, you can create the policies that you want, but if you don't understand how people and businesses are going to react to it, then it's not going to be an effective policy. On the same side, if you're creating a business venture, you're investing in something and you don't understand how geopolitics and history and all of the policy um, implications are going to impact that investment, then you're also kind of operating in a silo. And I think being able to speak both languages is something unique. And um, I mean, I'm still going through a recruiting process right now, but I think that's something that I'm able to talk about a little bit during interviews is, you know, that sets me apart a little bit from other people that are applying for finance um, roles from just an MBA. It's like, okay, well, I can talk to maybe the, the geopolitics. I've taken courses in history as part of our core curriculum where we understand how, you know, the Russia-Ukraine war is going to impact something in the future. You know, there's various geopolitical things that um, I think apply. Um, so those are kind of the big ones, I think. Yeah, I think there's, you know, I, I can totally second anything that Lakshmi and, and Kishan just said um, on a very sort of concrete way. Uh, you do gain an additional year and um, that might sound kind of silly, um, but, you know, there's there's a lot to do here. Um, <laughs> I think part of being integrated into the whole university also means that you have like an incredible wealth of courses to choose from, an incredible wealth of opportunities you will never manage to get go to all of them. Like, for instance, I'm realizing now I've never taken a law class um, despite coming in thinking it's the coolest thing ever that I can take class at the law school, but it just never fit my schedule in the, the way I wanted to do it. Um, so you're totally going to be missing out on some things, but having that extra year will give you an extra opportunity to actually uh, dive deeper, um, especially if you're sort of building new skills, if you're building new expertise in an area. Um, that can be a very, very helpful year. Um, it gives you an additional internship uh, over the summer. Um, that in itself can be very valuable in building a, a clear profile and building experience, figuring out, is this really what I want to do? Um, and finally, um, you're really kind of, you know, you're, you're adding an extra year, you're adding an extra degree, but you're really sort of doubling the access that you get to Yale in a way, right? Um, we mentioned career resources, we mentioned administrative resources. Uh, academic resources. Realistically, they double, right? You do really get two degrees. You are a part of two communities. You are a part of sort of two schools and you're a full part of each of them. Um, so I think that's maybe the sort of, at least in my experience, sort of been the most concrete ways I've benefited. Sort of a follow-on question. Um, 
how do you think the career opportunities um, and what people go on to do after they leave the joint degree program, how do they differ? Uh, or in what ways might they differ relative to the students who just do the MBA or just do the MPP? Anybody want to tackle that one? I can try. Give it a shot, and I'll, I might even add on some, Lakshmi. Go for it. Um, I think the starting point to that is the lens itself. Um, I think um, maybe a student only from the MBA program uh, might not think of certain opportunities because they might not have, I mean, they haven't studied a whole lot of public policy. So I think that itself, uh, the kinds of companies or kinds of organizations, uh, multilaterals that you look at, might be different and similarly vice versa, um, even from the Jackson perspective. So I think that's that's the first step. Um, second step, I think, is also like, I don't know, this is yet to be tested, but I think in the longer term, I think we might see more bridge roles. Uh, uh, people who graduate from the joint degree, I think, would be more likely to sit at a bridge role between the public and private sector in their um, sector of interest. Um, so yeah, this is two ways I think it plays out. Uh, you know, and you guys are being modest. Um, I'll add one other thing I've noticed because we've been doing this joint, you know, we've had joint degree students now for 12 years. And my casual empiricism is that the students who do the joint degree, they absolutely kill it on the job market. I mean, they, they do really, really, really well um, in terms of having an awful, awful lot of options. Um, and I think students from either program individually, of course, still do really well. But the joint degree students just raise that to an exponent. Um, and I, I've seen this now over the course of my time as the director of Jackson and now the dean. The, the joint degree students have some pretty amazing opportunities when they leave. Um, you know, we, we don't observe the counterfactual. All of you guys are so talented. Maybe you would have had those anyway, but I think the joint degree really does help. Um, there were a few questions and I'm going to, I'm going to probably take the first pass at this one. Um, people asking if they you need to have a background in economic development or public policy in order to be considered a strong candidate or Jackson. Relatedly, someone asked, should I be concerned if I don't have a background in econ, finance, or banking? Um, and the answers to, to both of those are, you know, you shouldn't be concerned and you don't need that background, at least at Jackson. Um, you know, at Jackson, the students come from amazingly uh, diverse sets of backgrounds. You know, Lakshmi is a lawyer. Um, we have students, uh, a, a good chunk of our students come to us after um, serving in the military uh, for a while. We have students who come to us having worked in the arts. Um, we have students who have come to us, you know, from business backgrounds and want to get more active in policy. But we also have students who have come to us from careers, you know, grassroots activists and decided they wanted to get more involved in things at the policy level. Um, and here at Jackson, anyway, all of those backgrounds are, are hugely welcomed. And then it's on me and my colleagues to provide the the training, uh, you know, the courses in things like economics or finance um, and policy analysis that are needed to, to be effective. But there's no expectation uh, that you have that before you get here. So, I, I, um, yeah, so I'll, that was a question and I'm, I'm gonna I'll just tackle that one. Here's one uh, for for you guys. Uh, someone asks, do joint degree students have their own cohort activities, specialized classes and programming, uh, et cetera, or do they just take classes and are integrated into the greater SOM and uh, Jackson communities? So maybe I'll um, I'll take a stab at that. We we don't have like a dedicated curriculum for joint degrees. Um, in fact, we usually we can kind of uh, drop some of the core classes that are shared between the two programs. So like the economics class, um, uh, you only kind of have to take in one core year. 
that said, we are as a cohort uh, of joint degrees currently sort of building out more of a community and a more formal community with sort of clear faculty sponsorship. Um, and, you know, one of the things um, that we're trying to to build up is exactly kind of a, a more cohort specific activities or joint degree specific activities. Um, what shape exactly that's going to take is still is actually in the works this semester. Um, uh, it probably will not be dedicated courses, but um, the, we do share a lot of characteristics and, and interests. Um, and so I think stay tuned. I think there's more coming in terms of uh, joint degree activities and extracurricular activities. Um, anybody want to add on to that? I'll, I, I can go on. We've got a, a, another question here then, which is wondered if the panelists might talk about what clubs, organizations, affinity groups um, they are a part of. Maybe each of you could uh, weigh in on that since the answers might be different for each of you. Um, I can uh, go ahead. I can start with that one. I was uh, very ambitious last year, um, mostly because you know, I'm so excited to be back in school and this is a very different environment than the undergrad that I went to. So I want to do everything. Um, so I did get involved in a lot of things. Uh, Yale Grad Rugby um, is open to both the, actually it's all, all the grad schools. So highly recommend if you're interested in doing something exciting and physical intramurals. Um, also, uh, I was, I, I participated in Mint last year as well. And I'm the co-president this year for the Impact Investment Competition. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I was able to do that. Um, what else? Uh, I was on the Journal of International Affairs with one of the executive editors for that. Um, and that was a really cool experience getting to edit and um, read through a lot of the submissions, um, put out a product at the end of the year related to international affairs. Um, that was a really cool community to be a part of. Um, and then there's something else. Well, I guess uh, here at SOM this year, I've been uh, been on the finance club um, and working through that. Um, and yeah, I was going to say all that time in rugby, you know, you, you get a pass <laughs> on forgetting stuff. Um, <laughs> also part of the uh, the veterans club for uh, for SOM, as well as the um, leading yes, the veterans club with uh, another uh, classmate, Caroline, uh, this year at Jackson. Great. Uh, Emmanuel, then Lakshmi on this one. Um, yeah, Clubwise, I was uh, an editor in the Yale Journal for International Affairs. Um, I am active in the Energy Club at the School of Management and at uh, in the Finance Club, uh, helping people with navigate the, the crazy kind of recruiting process. Um, I think one of the sort of big extracurricular that I've engaged in uh, since getting to Yale literally every semester is I've been a teaching assistant, uh, teaching fellow um, at Jackson, at uh, the School of Environment and at the School of Management uh, for a range of courses, which has been an amazing opportunity to um, make some pocket money, but also um, uh, the, well, more than pocket money, really, like kind of help me finance part of the degree um, and get in touch with professors like engage with the subject matter in a very different way, in a more in-depth way and getting to know the professors better. Uh, One thing I got out on the teaching fellow thing was, it, it's kind of like an extra course that you get to take too. It's like, um, I got to take a global health course essentially, even though I was a teaching fellow for it. Um, and it was just like a seventh course. And I, I, I will add that, um, I, I, I think this is right. Basically, if you're at Jackson and you want to be a teaching fellow, um, it's it's really, really pretty easy. There's in general excess demand uh, for teaching fellows and it's it's highly compensated. Um, Lakshmi, go for it. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned uh, last year at Jackson, I did the mint uh, competition. So I didn't do anything else. I just took them over six months of my time. Um, uh, that was super uh, interesting, informative, educational, and I'm also very close friends with my mint team. So um, that was also a really fun uh, consequence of doing the competition. Um, and then this year, I'm on the first year leadership for the Food, Agribusiness, and Beverage Club at SOM. Um, and I'm also um, a fellow for the Law, Ethics, and Animals program, which is called LEAP, uh, which is at the Yale Law School. Um, which is kind of the hub for animal agriculture and animal rights on campus. 
Um, and I'm also a fellow for the um, CBAY, which is the Center for Business and Environment, which is an initiative uh, between the business school and the School of Environment, um, where we discuss um, issues, contemporary issues of importance. Um, yeah. Great. Okay, last question. Um, I'm, and this is to each of the panelists. You know, could you offer a word of advice to those who are contemplating the joint degree program? Um, and we'll go uh, Lakshmi, then uh, Emmanuel, and then Kishan, you can wrap it up. You'll bat clean up. Um, yeah, I think my piece of advice will be to be just kind of go inside yourself and be clear about why you're doing both and um, like why Jackson specifically, why SOM and why this degree combination over any other degree combination or over just the two of them, individual, one of them individually. Uh, so I think being really clear about that is really vital to making the most of the experience once you get here. Um, and apart from that, I think just um, to Emmanuel's point of it is a huge privilege uh, to be here for three years. Um, uh, I mean, the scale and breadth of opportunities here is so incredible. So I think um, if you're clear about the reason why, uh, I think just the experience once you get here just becomes infinitely better. Yeah, I think sort of having a clarity of purpose um, in your application um, I think it's necessary both in making the decision to apply and then eventually come here, uh, but also like helps you actually write an application, right? Like um, people have I noticed some of the, the, the questions in the chat, right? People being concerned about their background, being concerned about uh, maybe also what exactly their interests are. Um, I think with respect to background, right? Like my, the cohorts come from all over the place, as, as Jim mentioned, right? Like all sorts of backgrounds. What is, I think what they all share, especially at Jackson, is that people know kind of where they want to go. Um, you need that because you have that flexibility in taking classes. You need to know what you want to be doing, um, what classes you want to be taking, not in detail, but like what direction you're going. And I think that's uh, both helpful in applying, but then also in actually enjoying and making the best out of the time here. I think. Uh... Two pieces of advice that I would give would be the first is just really learning about the cultures of the school. I think when I was applying to grad schools, I didn't necessarily quite appreciate the nuances and differences in the, the different cultures. And the first thing that struck me when I showed up at both Jackson and at SOM was each school has a, a very unique culture and you show up and like even amongst the MBA schools, like SOM, the number of people that were interested in that and society part was incredible to me. And I was like, oh, wow, this isn't just some lip service that they've like, you know, for advertising, it's like a very um, tangible and like it permeates every class. And that was the first thing that I noticed. Um, and I guess that kind of ties into my second point, which is, you know, I think applying to any of these schools, especially a school like Yale, is like, you're probably very high achievers and you're going to be surrounded by people when you go to a program like this that are like top performers but to me the, the benefit of doing joint degree and going to um, SOM where they had that focus on and society was you know it's what direction do you want to go in to me especially after the military I didn't want to just become another finance bro that was you know chasing chasing a big paycheck or something it's like I want to do something that was impactful and I wanted to stay grounded in um, development and economics and I wanted to do something that I thought was useful and I think coming to a place like Yale, um, having friends at Jackson that are very passionate about having impact um, is something that is really important to me and I think uh, is really unique about the joint degree. Great. Um, well, in closing, um, I wanna encourage all of you to apply. Um, I, I hope you found this useful. If you have other questions, uh, you could reach out um, to, to any of us. We're, we're pretty easy to find. Um, I want to thank uh, the panelists for taking some time uh, for doing this, for great, great answers, really, really insightful. And, and then those of you who are participants who have taken time out of your day to learn a little bit about SOM and Jackson, you know, thank you to you. Um, and I, I really hope uh, you'll apply and that we'll perhaps get to see you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.